Welcome to Bible Trivia. This time we'll be asking questions about the 12 disciples. The first question worth 100 points. Which disciple was a tax collector? Was it A. Matthew, B. Jude, C. Bartholomew, or D. Matthias? The answer is A. Matthew was the disciple who was a tax collector. The next question for 200 points. Who were the first two disciples to be called? Was it A. Peter and Andrew, B. Matthias and Matthew, C. Jude and Bartholomew, or D. Thomas and Philip? The answer is A. The first two disciples to be called were Peter and Andrew. The next question for lots and lots of points. Which disciple tried to walk on water like Jesus? Was it A. Thomas, B. Peter, C. Matthew, or D. Jude? The answer is B. Peter was the disciple who tried to walk on water like Jesus. The next question for a half a point. Which disciple was known as the Zealot? Was it A. Simon, B. Thomas, C. Judas, or D. Matthias? The answer is A. Simon was the disciple known as the Zealot. The next question for 500 points. Which disciple betrayed Jesus? Was it A. Thomas, B. Philip, C. Judas, or D. Bartholomew? The answer is C. Judas was the disciple who betrayed Jesus. The next question for a supercalifragilistic number of points. Which of these persons was not one of the twelve disciples? Was it A. Matthew, B. Andrew, C. Mark, or D. John? The answer is C. Mark was not one of the twelve disciples. The next question for 1,000 points. What did Jesus do to each disciple during the Last Supper? Was it A. Washed their feet? B. Hugged them? C. Gave them gifts? Or D. Washed their hair? The answer is A. During the Last Supper, Jesus washed the feet of each disciple. The next question for a dozen points. Which disciple looked after Mary after Jesus' death? Was it A. Thomas, B. John, C. Peter, or D. Andrew? The answer is B. John looked after Mary after Jesus' death. The next question for 800 points. Which disciple denied Jesus three times? 
Was it A. Peter, B. Thomas, C. Andrew, or D. Bartholomew? The answer is A. Peter was the disciple who denied Jesus three times. And the last question for double your current points. What did Jesus send two disciples to fetch on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Was it A. Palm leaves, B. A horse, C. A donkey and colt, or D. Food? The answer is C. Jesus sent two disciples to fetch a donkey and colt on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon.
people. I just want to say hello, 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 and welcome to this beautiful lesson today. And before we get started, I want to pray. Father, we just thank you. We just bless you. We just worship and adore you because you are the one and only true and living God. You are absolutely good, Daddy. You are absolutely good. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for sending Jesus because Jesus shed his blood to bring us back into your lap, Daddy. So we thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, I completely yield myself to you right now. Do whatever you need to do. Say whatever you want to say. And I ask you to say a personal, whatever you say, make it personal to each individual. Because you know us personally and you speak to us personally. So we thank you that you are a personal God. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> so... Today we're going to talk about the scarlet thread, and the scarlet thread represents the blood of Jesus, how Jesus is through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So in praying and preparing about this, I felt like the Father wanted me to talk about it in a kind of different way, because Jesus is, the blood of Jesus is from Genesis to Revelation, but he wanted me to talk about the person who carried that blood, because the blood is not just floating around. You know what I mean? It's not just floating around. It's in a person. So he sent the blood of Jesus in a person, the person of Jesus Christ. So I think that in order for us to benefit from the blood of Jesus and why the blood came and all that, we need to know the person of Jesus Christ. Just like right now, I'm standing here. I got blood in me. 
but you see, I'm the person that got the blood in me. And the Bible says in Leviticus um, 17, 11, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when Jesus came with that, he came with the life of the flesh in, when it is blood. Now, the reason why Jesus had to come with new blood was because Adam, the first man, all the blood of humanity was in him. So there was some blood there because the father wanted a, a son, he wanted a family. He had all the blood in Adam, but Adam messed around and ate the fruit, okay? So when Adam ate that dog on fruit, then all the blood of humanity got contaminated. So therefore, Adam sinned against the father. He had to be cut off from life. So now all of humanity is cut off, cut off because they're in Adam, all right? He got the dirty blood, he, he then broke off from life because he made the wrong decision. Decisions matter, right? So anyway, now all of humanity, which is in Adam, is dead, <laughs> just dead, 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 dead. But because God is wonderful and brilliant and he's everywhere, he knows everything, before the foundation of the world, it says in Ephesians that they already knew he was gonna do this. So they weren't shocked, having a fit, oh my God, the man ate fruit, they didn't do all that. They had a plan. They still knew I want me a family. So before the foundation of the world, the Bible says that Jesus said, prepare me a body. Prepare me a body because th they gave the earth to man. So Jesus had to become a man. He had to bring some new blood, all right? Some brand new, other than that, everybody born dead. And the devil like, ooh, I got this, I got this, but you ain't got nothing. All right, so <laughs> I get a joy out of letting him know he is defeated. All right, so anyway, um, now they already planned that Jesus will come with some new blood. This is why this is not just a Bible story. This is for your life today, for my life today. So now Jesus got to come as a man. He cannot come as God. But he has to get all through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is pointing to Jesus is coming with the blood. The lamb is coming with the blood. The lamb of God is coming with the blood. So they're doing all Old Testament, all these sacrifices, sacrifices pointing to Jesus. So finally, he steps on the scene with the blood. He lays his Godhead aside because in the beginning, he was the word. But now when he come out of Mary's womb, he didn't come from Adam's blood. He came out of Mary's womb with new blood so he could redeem us, buy us back. He, he came to buy you. So he knew when he came, I'm going to lay my God here aside. I'm not going to be like God. I'm going to be man. I'm going to be one of y'all. Why? Because John 3.16 says, For God so dearly loved the world. So dearly loved, well, nobody saved, but he so dearly loved his man. That's you, that's me, everybody. Because he so dearly loved the world. He loves you. That's why the blood had to come. But the blood came through a man, Christ Jesus, the master of the universe. And he said, I'm doing this because I love you. If nobody told you, I love you. I want you back. People may tell you you ain't jack. You can't do nothing right. You're messed up. You're stupid. You're dumb. That's not true. That's not true. Because Jesus, the master of the universe, who is God, laid his God here aside to come and become a man and get blood so that they can beat the blood out of him and kill him because the life Leviticus 17, 11 says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh, he had to bring life back. Remember, because Adam's blood is contaminated and dead because the joker ate from the tree. So now here comes the new blood, but it's coming through a person, Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, the champion. He already knew I'm coming because I want y'all back. The Father wants you. We got a plan. We planned it before you got here. 
So don't think that there's no plan for your life. There is. You have a destiny. Every single human being, you're not just a kid. You're not just a kid. You're not just a kid. You are a human being that Jesus loves and that he's watching you. He's watching over you with loving eyes. I don't care what's going on in your life, whether you're depressed, lonely, sad, rejected, suicidal, bullied, homeless, whatever, the worst situation you can imagine on this earth, there's someone who loves you. And he shed his blood to prove it. And the father, he, shed, he showed how much he loves you because he sent Jesus. So when people say, don't nobody love you, that's a lie. The creator of the universe loves you, loves you and wants you because the blood has been shed. So, but I want you to know the person. The reason why I want you to know the person of Jesus Christ is because he is a person. He got feelings. He loves you. He likes you. He wants you. So you're not just talking about a book. Now, this is the Bible. This is very important. But in this book is a person. So when you get your Bible and read it, I want you to look for the person. The Bible says in John 1 that the word was made flesh. So we want to find out the flesh person, and his name is Jesus. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. But he became flesh. So you don't want to just read this Bible. You want to look in here and say, Holy Spirit, show me Jesus. Make yourself real to me. That's why he came. That's why the blood was shed. So now he went to the cross where well, they beat him down. You know, well, if you've been in our Bible class, you know, you know, they beat him down, crucified him. But before they put him on the cross, they beat him, beat him. And they beat him so much he didn't even look like a human being. The blood was being shed. Remember, life is in the blood. So it's not just blood. It's a person that had to bring that blood. And that person is alive. He's well, he's where you are, he's everywhere, and he wants you, because he wrote a book about you. But, he want, but you have to ask him into uh, your heart, and then you have to let him be your Lord. That means read the word and say, oh, I want to see who you are, and then I want to do what you say do. And so that's, what, that's why it's very important to get to know the person of Jesus Christ, everything you will ever need in your life from now through eternity is in Jesus. There's no other savior. He, he's with you wherever you are. If you find yourself in a bad situation, maybe you've been abused physically, emotionally, sexually, whatever situation you're in, you're not alone. You have access, okay? Now, that, what he did on that cross is relevant to you today because of what I just said. How do we access that? We get in the Word with the Holy Spirit. You ask the Holy Spirit to help you to know Jesus. Now, this is Holy Communion, remember? So this represents the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. So this ain't just say, ooh, we took communion. No, this is real life. At that Last Supper, he said, look, this is my body. It was broken for you, so separate that. Remember, he said, remember me, because he did this for you. His body was broken, his body healed you. Healed me too, <laughs> so we gotta take advantage of this stuff. So you take communion with that in mind, saying thank you, Jesus, that your, your body was broken. I'm healed of this, that, cancer, whatever. Your mama, your daddy, everybody can be healed, because he already did it, we gotta receive it. This, the blood, the life, his, his life is in this blood. So we take this just remembering what he did and thanking him for it. So when you take this, this is how you appropriate everything that he paid for you to have. And the blood did it. The blood washed away your sins and made you righteous, right, right with the Father. So now you're back right with the Father once you accept Jesus Christ. And now you're clean again inside. You're a brand new person. So right now, before, before I go, <laughs> I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus Christ, this is the most important decision you will ever make in your life through now and eternity. Because if you leave this body without him, 
you can't go back to the Father. You got to go deal with that stinking devil. You don't want to do that. So while you're in time, just all you have to say is Jesus, because he's waiting on you. Come into my heart, be my savior, and, and, and I love you. Because <laughs> he's going to write your name in that book, and he's going to wash away all your sins. And then you just get to know who you have. So anyway, it's been a joy being with you. I hope you got something out of it. I know you did, because I asked the Holy Spirit to let you get something out of this. And he's faithful, and this is his, his benefit to you, but he loves you. Jesus loves you. Ask him to your heart and let him run your life. In Jesus' name, amen. See y'all next time. <laughs>